What Francesca tried to tell you, and what I agree with, is that our dem uh, democratic journey is incomplete rather than flawed. She said it's improving, it's improving now. Meetings are public, you can go to meetings, you can see them on webcasts, and there's more to come. And to the extent that it's not perfect, and what system is perfect, it's a product of our rather bastardised national system. It's not a product of the devolution deal itself. So what Francesca's done is to talk about the nature of the deal. I want to talk about the journey of how we got here and where we go next. Because what really matters for us as Mancunians is surely what, what we choose to do with this next. What surely uh, matters for us uh, most of all is whether we're in favour of a devolved uh, solution for our city, taking power back uh, for, to the city or not. And that's the real choice that was before us, and it's the choice that our politicians have decided to grab on our behalf. And I'm going to do this by asking and answering three questions. Firstly, was there a better and less flawed way of getting to where we are today? <coughs> no. Simply, flatly, no. I could agree with some of what uh, I've heard from, from, from the, uh, the opponents on the other side of the debate, but it wasn't on offer. It simply wasn't on offer. More to the point, we've tried the other ways. John Prescott, when he had his regional assemblies, put out a green paper and a whole consultation process, and do you know what it did? It put a bloody big placard out for all the enemies of devolution in central government, the people who stopped devolution ever ha happening, and saying, here's our game plan. And do you know what they did? They responded by making damn sure that the North uh, Northeast Regional Assembly referendum was about nothing. He got no powers because that's the way our state works. What happened the way it was done was that one of the most powerful politicians in the country saw that and decided that he was going to do the right thing and do what our leaders have done, which was devolve power, to take power away from central government and to give it to local areas. That's not flawed. That's understanding the way our system works and deciding to do something about it. And as, and as Francesca said, that was done by a government with an elected uh, manifesto uh, uh, for doing so. So to the second question, is the absence of a referendum cause enough to say that this deal is flawed? And again, of course it's not. We've had referenda for sure. Why do we have referenda? Well, why did we have the referendum on EU entry, uh, EC entry in 1975? Because the Labour government was split down the middle. Why are we having a referendum this year on European uh, issues? Because the Tories are split down the middle. Why did we have referenda on regional assemblies in the North East and on city mayors in the big cities? Answer, because Blair wanted one thing, Prescott and Brown wanted another, and they both agreed to frustrate each other's policies by imposing referenda on them. There is no tradition in Britain for referenda on issues of this kind. And let's just think about what I'm talking about here. The National Health Service was a product of a manifesto commitment by the Labour Party in opposition and uh, legislated for in 1946-78 uh, without a referendum. The 1944 Education Act, which created modern education in this country, was created without even a manifesto commitment. So why are we obsessing? about referenda. Why are we obsessing about referenda when the Greater Manchester County Council was imposed on us without a referendum, it was abolished without a referendum, and then when the government decided to take away uh, uh, various uh, powers from local government, we didn't have referenda about those either. We don't have a referendum to go to war. So why are we getting so upset about a referendum? When what we've got is an evolution of a model which sees no net new politicians in Great, Greater Manchester replacing a police, a police and crime commissioner with an elected mayor. It simply doesn't under, uh, uh, make sense to me. But the reason it doesn't make sense most of all, because a lot of the people I've seen arguing for referenda are progressive people who want to see more money spent on education, who want to see uh, environmental taxation because it's good for us. What they need to do is go away and read the literature on referenda. Machiavelli wrote about this in Florence in the Middle Ages. He said, beware the prince who wants to change things, because the people who will lose from a change will always protest, and the people who will benefit will stay quiet. And that's what happens in, in referendum. 
It's what happened in the congestion charge in Greater Manchester. On a low turnout, nine out of ten people came out and said no, despite the fact that it would have been good for our economy and good for our environment. And there's only ever been one council tax referendum for education spending increases that was won. The rest, a lot of them, were lost on small turnouts by people who didn't care very much for spending money on schools. So if you want progressive outcomes, it's not even obvious to me why you'd want a referendum. I just don't get it. My final argument is this. The question I want to ask you is, do we want to send the message out of a meeting like tonight to our country that we're cavilling, that we're resisting and that we're moaning? Well, I don't think we do. This is Manchester. We get things done. And I absolutely get the questioning of politicians. No democracy is, can function without it. I think a bit of suspicion about your politicians is a mighty good thing. But when that trips over into the cynicism that sees our local politicians described as uh, being self-interested elites, I think we've got to just pause. Because what made this city what it is, what dragged it back from the brink of, of disaster in the 1980s, the city I grew up in, was business, civic and community leaders working together and they're still at it, they're delivering project after project to make this city better. By God, I hope we have a different process for choosing candidates. I hope we have diversity. It's all there to play for. But to criticise in that way, it, I think, is not worthy of, uh, uh, of, of this city. And in the end, all those paltry turnouts on referenda, weak turnouts, suggest that the people of Greater Manchester and of Britain aren't interested either. What they are interested in is jobs, growth, sustainability and social inclusion and that is what is before us today so let the message from today but that that's what we care about not arcane uh, questions because what we've now got is something on the table that's worth voting for let's go fight for it let's go and make it work and i hope you reject the motion before you tonight thank you